Do you find joy in killing? Okay, maybe that's not the greatest question to ask, but Killjoy is out right now and here at Pro Guides, we want to give you guys a quick rundown on how to play this agent properly before you decide to bust her out and in every game in Act 2. Hello everybody, welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Stray and today we have an exciting guide on the new agent Killjoy. Alongside a new skin bundle and a battle pass we currently received, Killjoy is the 12th agent to be added in Valorant. She is a sentinel agent that comes from Germany and is bringing a bunch of fun new toys to the game. With her abilities and interesting ultimate, she'll for sure shake up the meta and be introduced into a lot of team compositions. Let's introduce some of her fun gadgets, shall we? But first we have our question of the day, as usual, what is your favorite part of the update? Is it the new agent or is it the deathmatch mode that has been recently released? It's kind of a toss up between Killjoy and the deathmatch mode for me. I definitely will be playing deathmatch quite frequently, but I think if I had to choose, I'd have to go with my girl Killjoy. Killjoy is a very solid pick for all occasions, as sentinels are usually just really good and I love her character design. I like her vibrant color scheme and the accent on her voice lines. I really enjoy playing this agent. Let me know what your favorite thing about the patches on the comments down below and if you're ready to pick up Killjoy. And here we go into the video, we'll first explain Killjoy's abilities. The first one is going to be Nano Swarm. This ability is a very powerful activated molly. For this ability, it's quite similar to Cypher's Cyber Cage. As in you drop it on the ground and it becomes stealth and then you can have it activated when needed. You can choose whether or not to overhand or underhand throw this ability. Killjoy actually has two of these to deploy, which is quite surprising to me with how strong this seems, but it does have its downsides though. Unlike Cyber Cage, this gadget can actually be destroyed by bullets and damaging abilities. When placing this down, put it in areas where enemies can't see as easily so they can't immediately shoot it when entering the area. Also in a similar sense to Cypher, switch up your Nano Swarm positioning so it doesn't get too predictable and players can just satchel or shock dart it every time. Practice placing Nano Swarm in different spots as this ability has actually a very big radius and also does good damage. It kills in under 3 seconds so the damage is comparable to Brimstone Molly. And speaking of Brimstone Molly, Nano Swarm is very good at post-plant situations. You can place one on the bomb, but you have to activate it before enemies get too close and see it. Some great spots to mention for Nano Swarm are Split B behind the default box, Bind B inside the tube, and Bind A inside the truck to get the default plant. These spots will help delay the plant and maybe even net you a kill. This ability seems really good and I think this is the ability that will most make Killjoy stay relevant in this meta. Next up is Alarm Bot. As the name implies, it's a small robot you have to deploy on the floor. I initially thought you could place this on the wall based on how it looked and how the Tracer showed it, but that would have maybe been too strong. Nonetheless, it's still very good. You deploy it on the ground where it stays stealth and it waits for the enemy to come by. It then displays an enemy has been detected on your screen and it runs and blows up on the target similar to Razor's Boombot. It does damage to any enemy in the vicinity and applies the vulnerable effect, meaning you're able to do 2 times more damage to these vulnerable enemies for about 2 seconds. This ability is great for scouting out opponents if they are in the area and it has great synergy with Nano Swarm if they do decide to push in. The Alarm Bot will first detect the push and maybe get the chance to blow up and apply the vulnerable effect. And then you can activate Nano Swarm to clean things up. The Nano Swarm will do a ton of damage with the vulnerable status as it already does 15 damage per tick. If you do have your Alarm Bot and Nano Swarm set up, you don't have to play in an active angle. You can just play passively in hiding and wait for your Alarm Bot to detect somebody. This ability can get destroyed by bullets and other abilities, so don't place Alarm Bot in the same place every time. Enemies will learn and adapt, rendering your little gadget useless. Also to mention, if you have your turret up, that would also do some good damage to targets that Alarm Bot applied vulnerable to. And speaking of the turret, a very controversial ability that's up next. Turret is a deployable sentry that shoots in bursts of 3 shots at a time. It starts shooting after detecting an enemy in a 180 degree field of vision after 0.75 seconds and has 125 health points. At 0 to 20 meters, this thing deals 8 damage per bullet which totals up to 24 damage when bursted. A little further at 20 to 35 meters, it deals 6 damage per bullet which is 18 damage. And even a little further than that, at 35 plus meters, it deals a measly 4 damage per bullet, dealing 12 damage for a total burst. As you can see, the turret doesn't do a lot of damage and it's also burst fire as well, so this thing isn't going to be used to kill opponents running in, which a lot of people were worried about when they first heard Riot was putting a turret in the game. Even though it's not going to be used for killing opponents, what this ability is great for is cross-firing, tagging enemies, and getting information. 
Putting this around to the opposite side of you will allow you to have a deadly crossfire making enemies confused and have to do kind of like a 180 in order to kill you. A pretty big disadvantage for them. It also makes them slow as they are tagged by bullets, making them a lot easier to aim and shoot down. Information is also pretty big here, as you can just hide and wait for the turret to start shooting and then peek off of your turret's shots. There are so many useful benefits to this ability as well as it's also Killjoy's signature ability. Even if it gets destroyed by enemies, later in the round you can still wait for it to recharge so you reuse later. In addition, it's also pretty good as acting like a trap wire as well if you put it on the flank. Initially, this ability got a lot of flack as players were worried about a turret being put in Valorant, but I think the developers managed to make it fit in the game very tastefully. I don't think this ability is too ridiculous or overpowered in the current state, but we'll have to wait and see. The value you get on defense event is pretty nice while on the offense it can be used as a tool to watch flank and also help on post plants. I should also mention, you guys can pick up both the alarm bot and turret if they don't come to your site. They are both put on a 20 second cooldown after picking them up. Last up is Killjoy's ultimate ability, Lockdown. Killjoy places down kind of a spike looking thing and the gadget takes 15 seconds to activate. When the 15 seconds are up, a huge electrical field comes out covering a very wide radius near a full sight's width stunning anybody in the vicinity. Enemies hit by the sun are not able to use their weaponry or abilities for 8 seconds. As you can tell this is a very slow windup yet a very powerful ability for gaining control of an area. This ability is great for flushing people out of hiding spots, post plants, and retakes. A lot of great uses for it. It makes it so that the enemy has to try and push to kill the lockdown gadget or stay away and get zoned for a full 15 seconds. Also if enemies are hiding in the vicinity, they will most likely have to get out and peek to give you and your team a chance to kill them because they don't want to be stunned for a sentry, well 8 seconds, pretty much same thing. This ultimate ability seems to have a lot of potential and I can't wait for Killjoy to see tournament play as she will be amazing on a coordinated team. The way teams will utilize Lockdown and defend it will be a kill joy to see. Lockdown is a very one of a kind ultimate and we haven't seen anything like it in Valorant. It's an ultimate zoning ability that punishes enemies that hesitate and take too long but at the same time can also force enemies to push which with proper setup with Killjoy's abilities can be devastating. On defense, your main goal is to get information if they're coming to your site and you can place this bad boy down in a nice protected spot. If they decide to push and want to kill your lockdown before it pops, then you have your nano swarm to slow them down as well as turrets somewhere shooting them. It's going to be pretty difficult for them to get through unless they destroy your nano swarm on the floor. Remember to mix that up and keep your locations unpredictable. Same thing goes for your turret. If they don't decide to push, that's equally fine. You buy at least 15 seconds for your teammates to rotate which is fantastic. On offense, you can throw this down close to sight when you're about to do a take. An example I have is if you're doing an A split and you place this in A short. The enemy either has to push and kill it or be forced to concede sight, or get stunned and then killed shortly after, but they probably won't do that. The other way is to save it for post plants. When enemies are rotating, again same concept as offending, they either have to wait a good 15 seconds or risk it and try to push in fast to kill it. With good position with your abilities, I can't wait to see what pro teams can do with her lockdown. So what is Killjoy's playstyle like? Well, she's a sentinel, so she excels in defending an area and getting information with her gadgets. Her style of play is going to be very similar to Cypher as in anchoring a site alone on defense, but her abilities are so much more different. Her mollies are great for denying an area to stop pushes and on offense is able to keep enemies off of the bomb or clear dangerous angles. Her alarm bot and turret are great for finding informations while doing a little bit of chip damage. Like Cypher, both of their abilities are great at watching the flank on offense and both alarm bot and turret can be picked up as I mentioned before if they aren't destroyed. On defense, she can solo hold sights and buy time for rotations while on offense, her abilities are great for watching the flank and also dealing with the post plan. So what team comp is best suited for Killjoy? Well obviously we need to see more gameplay. What we have been hearing though is the near of a triple sentinel composition. One that includes the deadly duo of Cypher and Sage plus the recent addition of Killjoy. The other two could possibly be double controller or single controller and Sova. So a really good composition could be something like Cypher, Sage, Killjoy, Omen and Sova. That's something I believe we might see in future tournaments fairly soon. A lot of people have been leaning more towards Omen recently as they feel he's the better map controller and only needs one good smoke to take a site. We'll have to wait and see. But also I do think that maybe Killjoy does take up that Cypher role and instead of Cypher you get Killjoy. Without Cypher you can opt for a flex pick in maybe a duelist. 
Killjoy opens up a lot of possibilities with a great sight lockdown and an alternative trapwire to watch the flank. To finish things up, I want to give you guys my thoughts on Killjoy. I think Killjoy is a very good agent that will see a lot of play in this meta. Her ability to watch flank and play post plant is very nice on offense. On defense, her turret and nano swarm are going to be huge factors in a successful hold, as well as her unique ultimate will create some interesting scenarios where it might force enemies into her utility or wait out a very long time for either the spike explode or teammates to rotate depending on what side she's playing. I would honestly place Killjoy in the middle of A tier as she is very, very solid. She does have some glaring weaknesses though, such as not having any dueling potential nor any smokes so she is very reliant on teammates, but when she does get into those favorite positions, she is a force to be reckoned with. And there we have it, that's our little Killjoy guide for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it and are on your way to becoming an amazing Killjoy. If you want, please hit the like and subscribe button as that help us out in growing our channel. Thank you guys so much ProGuys fam for watching our videos and as always, my name is Trey and I'll be signing out. Peace out.